Creatine, is it a gateway drug or is it a simple boost that you can use to get the most out of the gym, to get the most out of your life, and to even get the most out of your brain? I'm gonna dive into this topic and explain a little bit more how creatine works and how you can use it to your advantage or why you may want to abstain from it if you're a certain person. But before we understand how creatine works in the body, we have to understand a little bit more about how the body creates energy in the first place. Now, it's pretty common knowledge that we get energy from the food that we eat, but I wanna go into a bit more detail in how that food is converted into energy before I explain how creatine really works. You see, food is ultimately converted into something called ATP, adenosine triphosphate. And what that ATP is, is ultimately the root of all energy sources within our body, whether it's at the organ level or whether it's at the muscle level or the brain level. Now that ATP is regenerated in many ways. You see, when we perform activity, we deplete that ATP or we start to break it down. We break down ATP into something called ADP. So we go from adenosine triphosphate to adenosine diphosphate. Now we can replenish that extra phosphate store and get it back to a usable source of energy via three pathways. Okay, one is the creatine phosphate system or the phosphagen system. That basically allows you to get that immediate strength and it replenishes rather slowly. Then the next pathway is through something called glycolysis where we are actually pulling stored carbohydrates and converting that back into ATP or energy. Then the third pathway is through the aerobic pathway. Now, you probably all know the aerobic pathway. It's like running, it's low intensity activity. That aerobic pathway means that it needs oxygen. Now that is the slowest recovery period for ATP, the slowest regeneration period, but it's also the most long-term and efficient. Now for the sake of this video, we're gonna talk mainly about the phosphagen system, how you can get immediate strength and how creatine directly works with the body for energy. So like I mentioned before, ATP is broken down into ADP. So basically you're left with a spare phosphagen chain that is off of that molecule. Well, what happens is creatine phosphate, creatine, just like the stuff you see in the store or creatine, just like the stuff you see that's in meats and stuff like that, that creatine phosphate system is added to the ADP to create energy. Now the problem is we have very little creatine phosphate naturally stored within the body. So we expend and we utilize that very, very quickly which means we're not able to get multiple bursts of strength. We're only able to get like one and then we have to rest for a period of time. If you've ever noticed that people that are lifting really heavy weights, like in the one to four repetition range, like power lifters, they have to perform their exercise and then they have to rest for three to five minutes for that creatine phosphate system to restore before they can lift heavy again. So that's sort of how that system works. It's a slow regenerative process and it also takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of energy. But that being said, it's also the route for the quickest burst of energy when we're on the fly. Even though it takes time to restore, it is what is immediately going to give you the energy if you're going to say kick a soccer ball or immediately burst into a sprint. It's gonna give you that first few seconds of energy. It's almost like your emergency mechanism that's stored to just give you the power that you need to get up and go. So where does creatine come from? I think a lot of us only think that creatine comes from a big nasty fluorescent colored powder that's in a jug. Honestly, that couldn't be further from the truth. That came in later down the line. Creatine is generally regenerated by the body and it's created from amino acids in the liver and the kidneys. You see, we naturally create it. We usually get it from the diet, however. We get it from beefs, we get it from wild games, we get it from wild caught fish and a couple of other things. But our bodies do actually do a pretty good job of creating it themselves as well. Now, one thing we have to be aware of is you're vegetarian, you're probably not getting a lot in the way of creatine and we can handle that at another time. Now, vegetarians are people that might benefit from something like an exogenous source or a supplement. One thing that is interesting about creatine is the more that you consume, the less that you produce in the body. Now, we don't know if that is going to have a long-term effect later on down the line, meaning we don't know if you're gonna become dependent on an additional source of creatine coming in the body. We don't know if that's gonna eventually hurt you from creating it on your own, but it is still a pretty interesting mechanism to look at. In fact, one study actually found that exogenous use of creatine at about 20 grams per day, which is a pretty good amount, ended up only resulting in a 20% increase in overall creatine phosphate stores. So what this means is even at a tolerable upper intake level, like 20 grams per day, we're only increasing our creatine stores a tiny bit. Now, for those of us that are trying to get the most out of our performance, most out of our brains, most out of our strength in the gym, sure, we'll take 20%. We'll take all that we can get. But at the end of the day, if you know the risks, it may or may not be worth it. 
So let's dive in a little bit more to the risks. What are the risks of creatine in the first place? Well, you see, the thing is, there aren't a lot of studies that look at long-term use of creatine. In fact, I dug pretty dang deep, and the only studies that I could find were at the most, probably about two, maybe three weeks. So the thing is, is when people are taking creatine for extended periods of time, we don't know what the cumulative effect is. We don't know what that buildup effect is in the body when it comes to safety. One thing that we can note for sure is that creatine causes an increase in intracellular water. What that means is you're gonna draw more water into the cell. What that can mean is that your liver, your organs, your brain can actually become a little bit more dehydrated. Again, we don't know the long-term effects of this, but I've definitely talked to a lot of people that suffer from cramping or suffer from dehydration symptoms when they are consuming excess amounts of creatine. So definitely something to be aware of. But now with all that bad news, let's talk about another benefit of creatine outside from the gym. And this is something if I were to ever use creatine, this is the reason I would use it. You see, 5% of our overall creatine stores are actually in our organs. And when you think about how that system works in the first place, when you think about how creatine creates energy for a really quick lightning fast response, it makes sense. Our organs need that too, including our brain. Now our brain has to think on the fly. I'm using it right now. My neurons are firing in my brain so that I can articulate what I'm saying to you. Well, supplementing creatine or making sure you're getting enough from the diet can make sure that your brain has enough of those phosphate stores to trigger that neurological response, to get those neurons to fire so you can actually communicate better. There was one specific study that actually looked at this, and that one study found that there was a dramatic increase in memory and a dramatic increase in cognitive ability and cognitive speed off of just consuming three to five grams of creatine daily, which really isn't all that much. So yes, there is somewhat of a nootropic benefit to utilizing creatine. However, the dose that you use for a nootropic benefit is much less than the dose you might use to say, increase your bench press. So what are you gonna take away from this video? You know, at the end of the day, I wanted to get some education out there. A lot of people ask me about creatine, but ultimately what it comes down to is try to get your creatine from a bioavailable source. Try to get it from healthy meats. Get it from your grass-fed beefs. Get it from your wild game. Get it from your wild-caught fish. Now, I will say that poultry doesn't have much in the way of creatine, if any, so you do have to lean a little bit more on the red meats there. If you're not a red meat eater, I would recommend that you focus on finding a creatine supplement that agrees with you the most. There's a lot of different ones out there, crealcaline, ethyl esters, all these other different components, even monohydrates that are just the basic form. So I'll do another video on that in the future, but as always, keep it locked in here on my videos, know what's best for your body, and know what's gonna help you perform. See you soon.